Welcome to Present Truth Broadcast with Pastor Maxwell Ogaga. Brought to you by Present Truth Ministry, a teaching ministry where believers are trained to be established in the truth of God's word. If God will see your heart for the kingdom, he will put the resources in your hands. But you know the challenge we have? We start with a nice heart. And as the resources begin to come, then people begin to share with us. You know, in this life, you have to be wise. You know, you have children coming up, and the way the economy is going, you have to secure their future. And in an attempt to secure the future, you enter a race that you never come out. Then you have to ask yourself, that, and I need to ask some of you, some of you that the Lord had blessed, you will ask yourself, what did your fathers do to secure your future? There was no security. It was the mercy of God. Because they didn't even have what it did to secure your future. Now you think you're wiser. No, you're not. I'm not saying you shouldn't do what you need to do. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? But I'm saying that that will not be what occupies us night and day. There is something called the kingdom of God that God wants us to be involved in. When last did you get someone to church? When last were you passionate about someone and say, listen, I need to get you to church. I need you to hear the word of God. I need you to listen to this message. Some of you would not have been born again if someone was not after you. If someone didn't come after you. If someone was not after your case. Some of you did everything you can not to be born again. You just tried until someone says, listen, you must get born again. Some of you, it was, it was girls you followed to church. You, 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 you didn't plan to come and hear the pastor. You chased the girl and chased and chased and chased and she used that to bring you to church. Okay, if you come to church, I'll follow you. And you came and got born again. And for some of you, you still regret that, uh, <laughs> that if I had known, I would have followed the other girl because I was going to the club. Some of you, it was that, that was the only way God could get your attention. But you realize that you realize that God cannot get a man saved. Angels cannot get a man saved. Salvation can only come when another man preaches the gospel. You know what God told Peter? Cornelius, he says, I'm going to tell Peter to come preach to you words that you should be saved. And you know why I say God is looking for yielded vessels? The Bible says, while Peter was still speaking, the Holy Ghost fell. It was like God was just waiting for Peter to open his mouth so he could use that. Attempt great things for God. We're about entering another year. We're going to set goals. We're going to set things we want to do. Where is the kingdom in that? Look at what Nehemiah said. Let's, let's read on. So Nehemiah went, right, in the night, verse 11. So I came to Jerusalem. Let's look at verse 10. Uh, when Sambalat, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the Ammonite official head of it, they were deeply disturbed that a man had come to seek the well-being of the children of Israel. Can you imagine? Nehemiah says, I want to go build the, 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 the walls of Jerusalem. Some people heard it and they were disturbed. It's the same thing when you say you want to do the work of God. People will be disturbed. I can't tell you how many counsel I received at, at a young age when I, when I sensed the call to ministry. The thing, the thing is, I, I thank the Lord. It's the Lord has given me, based on the way my nature is, is God, God has given me a very uh, strong adventurous will and I thank the Lord that God has used it for the gospel I don't believe that anything I do will fail I don't believe it and if I'm doing something and you say I'll fail in it I'd rather continue and fail in that thing that's my kind of person I'll do it <laughs> and the Lord has used that for the gospel but I can't tell you how many counsel I received I remember uh, one of my wonderful aunties I've always wanted to be a lecturer. So I told him, I sense the Lord is calling me into ministry and I want to go into ministry. He said, ah, but you always wanted to be a lecturer. I said, yes, but the Lord is changing the direction. He said, ah, there are lecturers who are pastors. <laughs> and she said one word. She said, you want to walk here? And can't this same work be done here? You know, all the excuses. I remember one of my uncle was, was in the state house of assembly. 
So I met him. He says, oh, you're a very brilliant boy. Why, why do you want to, to, to do ministry work? I said, well, that's what the Lord has said. He said, okay, this one you're saying, that's what the Lord has said. That's what many people say. Oh. And this one that you're coming to my house, I don't want to hear tomorrow that you come and beg me for what to... In fact, I received more cautions than advice. I don't want to hear. Don't come back. This one. Now, I mean, you live there and you're wondering. Praise God. And one day I told myself, I said, well, we'll do ministry. If we fail, we'll fail. If we succeed, we'll succeed. And thank God for his message. Thank God for his message. I'm sure if I'd listened to a lot of people, I'd not be here today. Why can't I use my most beautiful years for the kingdom? Why can't I use my intelligence for the gospel? Why can't I use my energy for the gospel? Why can't I use my passion for the gospel? Why? It's because every time you seek to do something for the gospel, there are people who would always discourage you. Every time you say you want to pray, that's when you remember that there's soup in the fire. Every time you say, have you realized that any day you say you want to fast, all of a sudden all your friends start cooking pizza. This pizza, you have not tested my pizza once. <laughs> I say, well, we are, ah, no, what is, you can start your fast tomorrow. Before you realize, you, you're having pizza supply daily. No, I, I, let me, no, observe this. Every time you want to do something spiritual, make up your mind that you want to give to God. They're going to call you. Somebody's about to die. Re no, check it. Check it. Anytime you want to do something for God, something will come up. That's why a lot of people don't even give their tithes. It's not about Old Testament or New Testament. Before they realize, they have spent the 100% and it's not enough. So it's not whether it's old or new. There are, are believers who don't even care whether it's Old or New Testament. They don't even care. They just want to give to God. But they realize that it is not there. So until you decide to jeopardize your life and say, listen, this belongs to God and I'll give it, you will never be a giver. If you're not deliberate about giving to the kingdom, you will look at the end of your life and realize that you did not spend. It happened in my own life. Two years ago, I, I, I looked, because every year I, 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 I take a look at our giving. I looked at our giving. And I told my wife, I said, listen, we're giving to more people than giving to the kingdom of God. And, and giving to people is good, it's beautiful. But I said, listen, we're paying house rent, we're paying this, we're paying that, we're doing this, we're helping this school, we're helping that. I said, what is going to the preaching of the gospel? What is going to help the preaching of the gospel? This is helping people. But what is actually going to help the preaching of the gospel? What is going to support ministers? What's going to support TV programs and books and things that are going on? And that's why... Uh, this year, as a ministry, when we gave, we gave to the Bible Society of Nigeria that's helping to translate Bibles in different languages in the country. That's the kingdom of God. To make sure that people who cannot read English have access to the word of God so they can hear the gospel. That's what I'm talking about, kingdom. I'm not talking about good works. I'm talking about things that are directly in connection with what? With the gospel. So that men can find salvation. The most precious thing any believer must be willing to communicate to another human being is salvation. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? That should be the most precious thing. We shouldn't treat our salvation lightly. It is amazing now. That even some believers are saying that there is no difference between a Christianity and Islam. That we are all serving the same God. That's, where, that's how low we have fallen. You see someone living in sin. And you say, well, uh, I cannot judge. You don't really know who is serving God and who is not serving God. That's how far our theology has come. We don't understand the importance of salvation anymore. It's not in our heart to communicate it. If we say, for instance, we're not going to have church on Sunday, let's all go into the streets and preach the gospel 
you realize that some people don't even know the gospel. The next thing they will say is give your life to Christ or you will burn in hell fire. That's not the gospel. In the first place, the gospel is not giving your life to Christ. That's the wrong phrase. Because you were dead in sin and trespasses. You had no life to give to him. The gospel is you accepting the gift of God's salvation. You did not give your life to Christ. You accepted his life. That's what makes you save. And after accepting his life, you now commit your life to him as an act of consecration. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because you were dead in sin and trespasses. You had no life to give. You had to receive his life. So, verse 11, so I came to Jerusalem. I was there three days. Then I rose in the night. And a few men with me. I told no one what God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Are there things God is putting in your heart to do for the kingdom? I'm going to, I'm going to spend time. We're going to spend almost three, three, maybe three parts teaching on this. Are there things God is putting in your heart to do for his kingdom? I'm talking about kingdom now. He says, I didn't tell anyone what God has put in my heart. Nor was there any animal with me except the one I rode. And then he went through, through all of that. And why did God put this in the heart of Nehemiah? Because God knew that Nehemiah was going to respond to it. You see, God will not communicate kingdom commitments to you if he knows you will not respond. Hallelujah. Let's look at this town, for instance. There are regions in this town that still need to hear this word. You can take the gospel to them. Yeah. You can take the gospel to them. You know, I've always been passionate about God's work. And I've shared my story many times. I won't take time to share it. But one of the reasons that makes me passionate about God's work is I saw the mercy of God in my life. And I keep telling myself, if the Lord had not intervened, when I look at the direction of my life, I want to help many people to get it right. This broadcast is made possible by friends and partners of Present Truth. To become a partner, please call plus 234-805-888-7575. God bless you. Pastor Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video formats. Purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga. Please call plus 234-805-888-7575. I remember I started a campus fellowship when I was in school. It didn't, it didn't succeed, but it was good. I made an attempt. It failed, but it was good. And I learned many lessons. I've always tried to do something for the Lord. I've always tried to make sure that people get the truths of God's word. I remember my first mission trip to Cameroon. And thank God for my dear wife. We had saved, we had saved uh, 80,000. That was a ticket. I can't forget that experience because it's a very funny experience. I had a three weeks mission trip to Cameroon. That was all we had. In fact, when I got married to my wife, I told her, I said, you need to be very sure. And I had a notebook where I wrote all those things. I said, you need to be very sure because I cannot promise you prosperity. It wasn't as if I, was, I didn't have a vision. It wasn't as if I didn't have a goal. But I, I didn't know where this yieldedness to the Lord would lead me. So I didn't want to make promises. You know, some of you married your wife and promised that, you know, one day I'm going to be the president, you'll be the vice president, and all that. <laughs> I'm going to be the governor of my state. Don't underrate me. I'm going to be the richest man in Africa. I, I, didn't, want to, I didn't want to give out all of those fantastic promises. And later when they ask you, you say, it's not my will, but the will of the Lord be done. You know? But I, I said, this path we're chosen, I don't know where it will take us, but we just yield to the Lord. 
And we just got married not quite long, and the door opened for me to go to Cameroon, my first international mission trip. I'm talking about the things God put in your heart. And I said to you that God will not put certain things in your heart, except what? Except you will respond to them. Do you understand that? And uh, then, what's the name of that airline? Can you remember? Bellevue. Bellevue. Was it Bellevue? Maybe Bellevue. And uh, I think it's Bellevue. Uh, uh, we bought the ticket, sent to someone in Lagos, bought the ticket. Not knowing that the airline was having a crisis. They couldn't, uh, that was the year they shut down. So we bought the ticket a couple of months before. So I got to the, to the day, and my first international trip, you know how excited you are going to preach the gospel to the nations, you bounce to the airport as if it's your father that built it. I, I kept looking, I kept looking, I didn't see the Bellevue stand. So I asked the guy that, I'm supposed to fly today. Ah, they said, what time? He showed me tickets. Ah, Bellevue, they have closed. Ah, closed where? <laughs> is it close counter or I realized they were in a deep crisis they haven't flown in the last one month so I got to the, to the Bellevue office in, in Lagos there, they went to their, their office now from the airport and uh, I saw it, uh, <laughs> as, you know sometimes you think you have problems until you meet other people's problems and then you now start encouraging them so I met a guy there the guy was crying now when you see a man crying and you know, he's just crying like a woman and some things are bad. When you see a man crying and his nose is flooding and his eyes are flooding, you know that you can't ask the man what is wrong. You have to ask other people. So I said, what's the problem with the guy? I have forgotten that I came to solve my own international mission trip. The guy's wedding was Saturday. This was Thursday. Our meeting started on Friday. The guy's wedding was Saturday. The only plane that came from London then was so full he was the only one that got uh, a seat, right? Because of the problems they were having. So they promised that the wife, the week before, so they promised the wife was going to come that fight, that fight, that Thursday that we were there. So the, he came the upper week, the Thursday that he was there, and then the wedding was Saturday. Now, they had said no plane was coming from there. And the guy didn't have any money. So you understand the situation. Your wedding is Saturday, you are here, your wife is in London, and this is Thursday. <laughs> do, 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 do you realize that? And so we, we started consoling the guy. And, and, and so when I saw that guy's case, I know that there was no hope for me. You, you, you understand? Because if there was hope, these are the kind of people to attend to. The whole office, we didn't know who was in Bellevue. I mean, the whole place was scattered. And I, and I got back, so I called my wife. I said, this is what has happened. And I told myself, you know how you have told people you are going abroad, and then you realize you don't have visa, and they have not sent forth for you. How do you come back home? So I told my wife that I am going this mission. Uh, we will go. So I stayed in Lagos, called a few friends, and then I raised the money. So I spent about three days trying to raise the money, and I went. But I want to talk to you about that commitment. What makes you take all the saving you have to buy a plane ticket to go and preach? And remember, this is not preaching for honorarium. And three weeks, we preached the gospel in Cameroon. And that preaching the gospel in Cameroon, some of the trips we made were overnight on back of trucks. I've shared the story here of how the police detained me because of yellow card. I had my yellow card in Douala. We we're going to another city. And I didn't know in Cameroon everybody carried ID card. So I carried only my international passport, no yellow card. So they stopped me. Checked my passport. Where's your yellow card? I said, it's in Douala. They said, okay, fine. Stay here, let your friend go and bring it. I said, no way. At least I'm preaching the gospel, but there's still common sense that I came with from Nigeria. When everybody speaks French, I should allow my friend go to go and bring your look at it. I said, no way, he's not going. They said, okay, they're going to take me to go and eject me and give me the yellow card. I'm like, no way, they're not going to eject me anything. I mean, I'm French police are kind of very funny. And we were there from 8 o'clock to 2 a.m. in the night. And about 2 a.m., a card fell off. We're talking, so one of the complimentary cards that I had then fell off. And then the guy read it. I said, oh, okay, you are truly a pastor. You people can go. How do you start going at 2 a.m.? So we walked past them a bit. And then we saw this truck coming with all kinds of things on it. We had to flag it down. 
and we traveled from 2.30 where we saw that truck till 7 o'clock where we're going. And the meeting was to start by 7.30. So we landed, I got to the place 7.30 and I started preaching. Commitment for the gospel. <clears throat> what compels you? What will make you make that kind of sacrifice? Don't you care about your life? But if men will do everything for an earthly king, how much more will do for a heavenly king? Why can't we go the extra mile for the gospel? Let's read verse 18 quickly. And I told them of the, okay, well, the, you know, the whole people and all that. And I told them of the hand of my God, which had been good upon me, and also of the king's word that he had spoken to me. So they said, let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to this good work. The kingdom of God is a good work. Whatever you do for the kingdom is good work. It's good work. Have friends that will encourage you to serve the kingdom. I'm not saying everybody should become a pastor. But I'm going to show you in the course of this teaching the things we can do for God, for the kingdom. Look at this. But when um, Sambalat and Tobiah, the Ammonites, official and Geshem of Arab heard of it, they laughed at us and despised us and said, what is this thing that you're doing? Will you rebel against the king? Many times when you're doing God's work, men will laugh at you. Men will laugh at you. Many times. When you start going about the kingdom, when you start preaching, people will laugh at you. Try and preach in the market. <laughs> you see how, well, now these people preach in the market and collect offerings, so they don't laugh at them now. But go try and preach and see how people will laugh at you. See how people laugh at Christian values. See how people laugh at godly things. Attempt to share the gospel in your office and people would laugh at you. Attempt to be committed in your church. You will say, ah, you are just loyal to a man. We can't even talk about loyalty nowadays in church. Ah, you are worshiping your pastor. We can't talk about loyalty. We are almost ashamed to identify with the ones that lead us. Because you would look like a man who is not reasoning. How can a matured man like you? Oh, this religion nonsense. Ah, think, be logical. And see how godless our world has become. See how far we've thrown all sense of values and ethics out of the window. We can't even keep our words anymore. Someone will tell you something. Uh, you know, today I, I went to, to we get, went to get some lines for, for the Podaco church. And uh, we went to a particular office and we went to another office. But I told the people that I was coming, I'm going to come back and do this. And uh, uh, in the MTN office. So when we went to the Glow office, we saw the kind of numbers we love. But on our way going, I was telling the guys with me that we already told these, these ladies in the MTN office we were coming back. But we didn't need the number again. But I told them something. I said, I already told them I was coming back. I need to keep that word. Even though I didn't need the number, I went there, did everything, registered it, just kept it. Why? Because I've told them I was coming. If I give you my word, I'm going to come to do something, I will have to do it because it invalidates the gospel that I preach. You realize that if I don't keep my word, the next time I don't keep my word, one day they're going to hear me preaching. They said, ah, he said, don't mind that man. He came to our office. He said, he was coming till today. We have not seen him. It will invalidate everything I'm preaching. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes you have to go the extra mile to keep your word, not because of your convenience, but because of the sake of the gospel. So that the day you would have the opportunity to preach the gospel to those people, they will not be turned off. The reason most of us cannot commit to the kingdom is our character has assassinated the message already. In the office, you have insulted people's wives. You have talked about people's wives. Discussion is around girlfriend, 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 girlfriend. So the day you, you mistakenly brought your Bible to church, to, to, to your workplace, and the mistake is that the bag you carried to church that Sunday, you didn't know you forgot to remove the Bible. So you just came to the office late and you were thinking you were bringing five and you brought the Bible. And he said, ah, do you even read the Bible? He said, no, someone actually sent me to, to... You're ashamed. Because why? Your life is contrary to the book. All your discussions, you have insulted everybody. We cannot attempt great things for God if we don't put our lives in order. 
May our daily life not become the greatest hindrance to the message of salvation. Are you following what I'm saying? Coming to church is overrated. It's not just about coming to church. It's living the very life of the gospel. That's why we need to plant more churches. That's why we need to preach. That's why we need to go on missions. Attempting great things for God. Last verse. Verse 20. So I answered them and said to them, The God of heaven himself will prosper us. Therefore, we are, we his servants will arise and build, but you will have no heritage or right or memorial in Jerusalem. Would you have a heritage in the things of God? We're going to build on this when next I teach. Attempt great things for God. Would you have a heritage? He says, listen, we're going to do this, but you're not going to have a memorial. Today we talk about people like Amesim Pe McPherson and Catherine Coleman and all the wonderful people, William Wilberforce and all the godly men that God used to shape our society. Would our only memorial be the natural things we acquired? Or will our only memorial be the prosperity that God has given to us? Or we're going to have a spiritual heritage that we're part of those who rebuilt the church. We know you've been blessed by this telecast. To become a partner, please call plus 234-805-888-7575. Pastor Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video formats. To purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, please call plus 234-805-888-7575 or send us an email, office at pastormax.ng. Also available are free downloads from www.thepastormax.ng. God bless you.